Well guys, it's finally time for me to weigh in on Intel's 11th gen core CPU launch. And since it's been a few days since the initial reviews actually went live, I have the benefit of some perspective. So today I'm gonna to be doing things a bit differently. And I'm simply gonna be focusing on answering a question. If you are building a gaming PC, are there any Intel CPUs in this new Rocket Lake lineup that are actually worth buying? Or for me, worth recommending over a competing AMD Ryzen chip? I'll do my best to talk you into it. Let's get started. Excellent. The Thermaltake Tower 100 is a unique and versatile mini ITX chassis with a ton of features. Three tempered glass panels provide an ample view of your epic build. The vertical orientation means support for big three slot graphics cards and up to 190 millimeter tall air coolers. And every side and top panel is removable, which makes building or accessing the inset magnetic dust filters way easier. This case performed well in my testing, even with a high-end 5900X and RTX 3080 system inside. And I like the full-size ATX power supply support too. For more on the Tower 100 from Thermaltake, click the sponsor link in the video description. So a couple things to mention right from the get-go here. One is that uh, there are timestamps. You can use those to jump around in the video if you want. And two, this video is not sponsored or influenced by Intel. It was not their idea. It was mine because I am a contrary person and because I think that you need to look at a topic from all aspects in order to properly judge it. When testing a new piece of PC hardware, we often set it up with an overpowered test bed to see how it performs under ideal conditions. So in the same vein, I wanted to see if Intel Intel's 11th gen CPUs make sense for anyone if an ideal set of conditions are met. So, at the heart of any gamer's CPU buying decision is a list of factors that contribute towards a final choice. How much does the CPU cost? What is the performance like? What do you need to cool it? Do you have access to compatible hardware like a motherboard? Is it even available for sale? And then maybe you'd factor in efficiency and power draw to sort of round things out. Price and performance usually mean the most to people and CPU performance is typically split between gaming performance and compute tasks. With that in mind though, here is the quick assessment of Intel's lineup that they they just launched based on the initial round of reviews. The i9s and i7s are all 8 core models now, 8 cores and 16 threads, which somewhat embarrassingly makes Intel's last gen 10 core models a better choice for compute tasks, or even better, an AMD Ryzen 12 core like the 5900X if you can find one. If you happen to be more focused on gaming though, there's not really a meaningful performance improvement for these 11,000 series i9 and i7 eight cores over Intel's own i5 six cores like the 11600K. And if you want something that's kind of in the middle with eight cores, 16 threads, and near optimal gaming performance, well then your best bet is the Ryzen 5800X, which you can actually buy for $450 right now. That shouldn't be a big selling point, but that's the MSRP. And in this day and age with computer parts, that's kind of a big deal. But you don't even have to take my word for it. This is pretty much the story across the board for the 11700K and 11900K reviews. Gordon at PC World said, Intel's 14 nanometer farewell tour can't end soon enough. PC Gamer described the launch as a lackluster last hurrah for 14 nanometer. Tech Radar said the 11900K isn't good. Gamers Nexus called the 11700K a waste of sand and the 11900K embarrassing and pathetic. Hardware Unboxed said the 11900K could be Intel's worst flagship CPU ever. That's just a small sample and links to all of those reviews are down in the description if you wanna read some more. It all boils down to the fact that whether your focus is gaming performance or compute performance or some mix of both, there are simply better options than the 11th gen eight cores, either from Intel's own 10th gen 10 core CPUs or from their 11th gen six core CPUs or from AMD's Ryzen 5000 series lineup, particularly from AMD if you care about power draw. So the new eight cores just aren't really worth considering based on the reviews, but uh, let's say that you're okay with a six core because gaming is your focus and budget is a concern. So a two to $300 CPU sounds like a way better deal than the 610 to $620 i9-11900K, which is what it's currently going for retail or the 450 5800X or even the $350 currently 5600X, which is $50 over MSRP. So that kind of sucks. In that case, you'd also want to consider the Intel 11th gen i5s. And that's where the new 11600K is going for a much more reasonable $270 right now. The 11600K has also received much more favorable reviews because it's actually a decent bang for the buck. And it does provide a really good gaming experience, even when paired with a high-end GPU like an RTX 3080. PC Gamer said the 11600K tickles their price to performance sensibilities. PC Mag said it's a solid Rocket Lake gaming chip that squeezes the last drops out of 14 nanometer. And Gamers Nexus said the 11600K is actually good, asterisk, which 
even with the asterisk, is some of the highest praise I've ever seen Steve heap on any product. So with that said, here's the part where I am gonna do my very best to recommend an Intel CPU for you. The 11600K most likely, or one of the other six core i5s if they make more sense, maybe. Uh, but that's if you meet these criteria. If your focus is primarily gaming and you intend to buy a mid-range to high-end GPU at some point, but you don't have one right now. And you definitely don't wanna spend two to three times MSRP or more right now. But you also need a desktop computer right now. Now, maybe for work or for Zoom meetings or something like that. Uh, if that's you, then you might actually be in the market for this CPU. If you'd rather build now and use your PC immediately while taking your time to get a GPU at a good price, that is good too. If you're interested in further tinkering with your build and maybe even overclocking in the future, then you would want the Unlock k SKU or 11600K as well as a Z490 or Z590 motherboard. Now, a lot of this logic relies on two things though. The GPU market as it is today, which is ridiculous and overpriced. So that greatly enhances the value of the integrated UHD 750 graphics in most of the Intel 6 cores and the relative price and availability availability of AMD's competing CPUs, which for the 5600X is $350 when it should be $300. Now, AMD also has CPUs with integrated graphics, but unlike Intel, most of AMD's CPUs don't, and then a few do, whereas with Intel, most of Intel's CPUs do have processor graphics, and then there's a few that have an F on the end that don't. AMD's integrated graphics are also notably better than Intel's current integrated graphics solutions, especially on the desktop, but the last gen Ryzen 3000 series CPUs with graphics, like the 3200G and 3400G, are also way marked up. The 3200G should be 99 bucks, but it's closer to 200, and the 3400G should be $150, that's what it cost at launch, but now it's selling for almost 300. And these still use 12 nanometer Zen Plus CPU architecture, which debuted in the Ryzen 2000 series CPUs like the 2700X all the way back in 2018. Now, AMD's 4000 series CPUs with integrated graphics that also have 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture like the 4700G were OEM only in 2020, so you could only get them in pre built systems. And while they were supposed to be available to the public in 2021, they are still nowhere to be found. So, if you want to build your own PC and you need video out capability right now, now, your list of affordable options has grown thin indeed. Now, I'm not sure if all that convinces you, but here are a few other things to think about. If you're already strongly considering an Intel 11th Gen 6-core CPU, definitely also look at Intel 10th Gen CPUs, both the 6 and 8-core variants, such as the 10700K 8-core, which is currently $320, or the 6-core 10600K, which is $220, as well as lower-priced Z490 motherboards from last year. You will lose PCIe Gen 4 support, but that's a minor trade-off for budget builders and it will have next to zero impact on gaming, even if you eventually get a PCIe Gen 4 GPU. Other 11th Gen 6 cores could also work like the 11600 non-K or the 11500, but these are locked for overclocking and they do run at a bit lower frequencies. Beware of the F variants like the 11600K F or the 11400 F, unless you already have a GPU of course, because these do not have an iGPU. And also note that the 11400s down here here have the Intel UHD Graphics 730 rather than the Intel UHD Graphics 750. Uh, 730 only has 192 shaders instead of 256, so it's worth a few extra bucks to get the higher end model. I wanted to also mention that Intel's k SKU CPUs, such as the unlocked 11600K and 11600KF, do not come with CPU coolers. So that's an added maybe $30 to $50 cost for a decent air cooler that you will need to add to your parts lists. This might put the Ryzen 5600 back on your radar since it is the only current Ryzen 5000 series model that ships with a cooler, but it would really need to come back down to 300 bucks to make it a better choice. Whether you go AMD or Intel right now though, both AM4 and LGA1200 are essentially end of life sockets and both companies are expected to put out new mainstream platforms in late 2021 or early 2022 which will also probably switch to DDR5 and will not have any backwards compatibility with current CPUs. So if you can wait eight to 12 months, maybe you should. Maybe there will even be GPUs for sale by then. 
So once again, you guys, I approached this launch in a different way than I've approached pretty much any CPU launch that I've done in the past, I don't know, five years or since I've really been doing serious CPU launch reviews. I think it had its pros and its cons. So if you guys have any feedback for me, leave that in the comments section down below. I'll definitely check that out and hear what you guys have to say. While you're down there, of course, you can check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and stuff with my thumb screw logo emblazoned upon it, as well as my new beer sets with the bamboo coasters, which are very nice. Once again, if you guys want further reading on uh, the 11600K or 11700K or 11900K. All of those reviews are linked down in the video's description. A ton of benchmarking work is represented there, so much respect to everyone who invested all that time to get those numbers that we could all digest. I think that's all I have to say for now, so if you want to hit the thumbs up button on your way out, that's greatly appreciated. If you are not subscribed to my channel and you want to do that too, that's also really cool. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.